now to Francis Crook to continue the case for the proposition. Thank you very much for inviting me here. This is definitely one for my bucket list. <laughs> um, I'm going to talk about revenge, because that's what we're really talking about. Retribution is revenge. And I've got three parts to my argument. And the first is that I think retribution or revenge has got us into this mess. And we are in a mess in the justice system. I know because I work in it, have done for 30 years. And in fact, I think that retributive justice or revenge with justice is an oxymoron. Revenge can never be just. It inflames a bloodlust. How can it be right that if something has gone wrong and someone has been hurt, that you make it better by hurting someone else? Adding to the pain doesn't make things better. And the mob is never satisfied. They always want more pain, more um, anxiety. People always think that retribution will solve the problem, but it doesn't. There is actually no evidence about that. Yesterday, the government announced it was going to increase the sentence in, of imprisonment for people who assault NHS workers. Now, I want to keep nurses safe. I want to keep ambulance workers safe. But I have never seen any evidence that if you increase the punishment of the prison sentence for somebody who is floridly mentally ill, they will not attack a, a mental health worker. I've never seen the evidence that if you increase the prison sentence for somebody who is high on drugs or drunk, that they won't carry out an assault. <coughs> Another example is Battersea Dogs Home. Now, you wouldn't think they were much to do with punishment, but actually they ran a very powerful, big um, advertising campaign uh, to increase the punishment in the prison sentence from six months to five years for hurting an animal. I like animals. I'm a vegetarian. Not a vegan, <laughs> but a vegetarian. <laughs> One day, maybe. Um, I like cats and dogs. I have a cat. I don't like to hurt animals. However, I have never seen any evidence that, send it, that the threat of being sent to prison for five years would stop someone hurting a cat. And in fact, the only evidence that Battersea Dogs Home provided was a whole research paper that they put on their website that talked about how every state in the USA had greater punishment than we have here. They do that a lot in America. <laughs> I don't think it was really about protecting animals. Actually, it was a great fundraising campaign for Battersea Dogs Home, one of the richest charities in the country. It was not about protecting animals, and it just increases the bloodlust. There is a fashion for increasing prison sentences for hate crimes. Every time we hate everybody, apparently, and we hate a lot of people now, apparently, we've got to increase the prison sentence because that's going to protect those people more. There is no evidence for that. What has happened, though, we've had sentence inflation. We send more people to prison now than we ever did before, and we send them there for longer. So the number of men, women and children in prison has doubled since the time of Margaret Thatcher. Now, Margaret Thatcher was no softie, but she managed somehow with a prison population of less than half of what we've got now. And what we've got in prisons is crowding, overcrowding. We have rat-infested prisons. We have people taking their own lives. I've been and stood with a sobbing mother at the uh, inquest of her 19-year-old son who took his own life in prison. And he was sent to prison um, on remand because he, was, he had a knife. Actually, he was going to harm himself, not anybody else. That's what happens when you have a system which is based on revenge and just, it gets the bloodlust going and everybody gets sucked in. Retribution is the justice of the lynch mob. My second point is that it does catch in its net the mad and the sad and the vulnerable. <coughs> the Howard League for Penal Reform, where I work, we have a, a helpline, a legal helpline that goes into prisons so that children, and we, yes, we do have children in prison um, from the age of 15, and young adults can phone us directly and it's confidential and they will get a lawyer or a caseworker on the other end of the phone to give them advice. 
In the last three months, we've had 1,643 calls about children and young adults in prison. I'm going to tell you about Robert. He was convicted of a street robbery. And because it was his first offence, he was given a community sentence. And the community sentence meant that what he had to do was he was given an electronic tag and a curfew. That meant he had to stay in every night. Now, this is a 16-year-old, right? And staying in every night is difficult when you're 16. So he didn't. He broke his curfew. So he went back to court, and the court said, we gave you your chance, you've had enough, you have to go to prison. So they gave him what's called a detention training order, half of which is served in prison and half in the community. And he was sent to prison. It didn't go well. He was released for his second half of his sentence back into the community. And the youth offending team thought, he needs punishment. We'll give him a tag. We'll put him on a curfew. So now we were on the third punishment for one offence he committed nearly a year ago. It didn't go well. So he broke his curfew and he was sent back to prison. So that's four punishments for one offence. We, the Howard League is in the High Court next week with the Lord Chief Justice hearing the case. You heard it here first, we haven't announced that. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> um, we are challenging the use of solitary confinement on prisons, on in prison on children. Uh, the child we're representing was held in solitary confinement for months in basically a stone cell, not seeing any other child. Um, with hardly any education. The only education he got was when they gave him a little photocopied sheet and shoved it under the door. That's what happens in our prisons at the moment. My third point is to support Sarah, because we are on the same side. We need something else. <coughs> Retribution has failed. Retribution makes the person who did something wrong feel that they're the victim doesn't get increased empathy or sympathy or apology. It makes them feel that they are the victim, and it encourages lying and denial. <coughs> There's an American academic called John Braithwaite who developed a, a system called reintegrative shaming, where the idea is that you take ownership of the wrong you've done. You you're sorry for it. You feel shame, and you do something positive to make amends, and then you are reintegrated. You are forgiven. The criminal justice at the moment doesn't allow that to happen. It makes things worse. It makes things worse for victims. It makes things worse for the taxpayer. It makes things worse for professionals. And it makes things worse for communities. I do think people should be held accountable for the wrong they do. I think that's right. Whether it's an individual, it's a company, it's an environmental crime, Whatever kind of crime, I think people should be held accountable. But I want to heal the damage that's been done. A crime is corrosive. It does damage individuals and the fabric of our society. I want to heal that. I want to make things better. And our system of justice at the moment makes things worse. I want to see reconciliation. I want to see restitution. I think if somebody does something wrong, I want them to make amends. Rather than lying in a cell, in a rat-infested prison, for six months or five years or something, I want to see them doing something to make amends, either to the individual victim, or to you, to society as a whole. I want to have a transformative justice system that heals and makes things better. When I was at school, we used to have to say prayers. And one of the prayers we said every day was, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Now, I'm not a Christian, but I think that's one of the most powerful things you can say. Forgiving does not mean forgetting or ignoring. It means paying witness to what happened and making it better. There are restorative solutions, and all the evidence shows that victims actually like restorative justice. They feel that that's the best way forward. They don't like retributive justice, they like restorative justice. And I actually think that we should have evidence in the justice system. So restorative justice works. I ask you to support us 
because I would like to see us not doing the same mistakes, committing the same mistakes that we've made for the last 2,000 years. I want to see for the next millennium something different, something better, something that works. Thank you.